For some reason, on YouTube and in general, this is the common narrative. 1941, the Japanese launched a surprise air raid on the US Pacific fleet at Pearl Harbor and inflicted a huge amount of damage. They also attacked British colonies in Southeast Asia. Roosevelt had no choice but to declare war on Japan, and so did Churchill. Hitler then declared war on America, even though he totally didn't have to. But this isn't what happened. Quite the opposite, in fact. Here's what really happened. I'll leave the answer of whether Hitler was right to declare war on the USA up to you. Let me know down below. I'll give my opinion at the end, but the rest of the video is quite simply, from Adolf Hitler's own mouth, his reasons for declaring war on the USA. When he announced this to his people, he made an almost 30 minute speech listing off why he did so. It's worth noting in a way, Hitler admired the USA. When he was a child, he'd always harass his classmates to play cowboys and Indians with him. He always had to be one of the cowboys though. He read westerns constantly even into his teenage years and later on he admired the American people for their accomplishments in conquering what was essentially a continent-sized landmass and holding on to it. In another way, he thought America was weak and decadent and wasn't a very united nation due to their sheer amount of ethnic groups in the country. He thought it was undermined by a Jewish banking class as with most of the capitalist countries, but he felt the USA, along with London, was the epicenter. If he thought America was multicultural, decadent, weak, and had a corrupt ruling elite then, I think he'd be lost for words now. Even before war had broken out, the US had picked a side. From as early as 1937, Roosevelt was inciting the American people against Germany. At the time, the American public was strongly against war, and a large amount even sympathetic to Hitler. Even up until the outbreak of war, the American public remained rightly, strongly against war. In his speeches, Roosevelt talked of cutting off the authoritarian states like Italy, Japan and Germany from the rest of the world. For some reason, the Soviet Union was never mentioned and had a soft spot in his heart for them, as would be revealed later. During the crises of 1938 and 1939, Roosevelt threatened countries who tried to pursue peace by blocking credit and calling in loans early if they didn't stand up to Hitler. There's only strength in Hitler's opinion of America as being ruled by a corrupt Jewish financial elite. He saw this as a typical tactic of theirs. He felt Roosevelt was a hypocrite of the highest order, as he would always talk of the Monroe Doctrine, basically America's policy that no one is to meddle in the Americas, which everyone was happy enough with, Yet Roosevelt would constantly meddle in European affairs. Once war broke out, Hitler's dislike for Roosevelt grew even more. Roosevelt froze the assets of Denmark and Norway when they were occupied, and in Hitler's eyes, this was ridiculous, as he wasn't even interfering with the Norwegian or Danish government's economic affairs. Roosevelt also recognised all of the governments in exile that were chosen by Britain. Roosevelt twisted the arm of these governments into allowing the Americans, who weren't at war yet, to occupy Iceland and Greenland later with troops. When it came to the fall of France, ten days before the surrender, Roosevelt offered the French president to double American aid to France if they continued the fight and didn't capitulate. According to Hitler, Roosevelt wanted war in Europe because otherwise all the money he'd been spending on rearming would be recognised as a fraud. Clearly, no one would attack America at home. No one had any interest there. So America would have to provoke an attack for any war to come about. As we know from our time, this was obviously a ridiculous remark. America would never enter a prolonged foreign war to enrich the business class or to serve foreign interests. Anyway, back to the list. The USA had a strict neutrality policy, and Hitler felt this was being broken in the most blatant fashion imaginable. A one-sided supply of weapons was being pumped into Great Britain, albeit at great cost. Hitler was disappointed the British Empire that he admired so much was being sold off to the Americans for pennies on the dollar. US citizens were also allowed to join the British Air Force. In return for 50 destroyers from the American fleet, the British gave the Americans dozens of military bases in North and Central America. As the Battle of the Atlantic progressed, Roosevelt made what Hitler viewed as several increasing violations of international law. Under Roosevelt's orders, American ships would report the location of, and sometimes even guide, British ships towards the location of German ships. Countless German ships had to scuttle themselves because they were being pursued by the American Navy so that the British could come. In March 1941, all German ships in US ports were confiscated and citizens arbitrarily locked up, clearly against international law, yet at the same time, the Germans allowed the US to supply the British in the Red Sea, unmolested. Two German officers who escaped across the US-Canadian border from Canadian prison camps were locked up and returned to Canada. Roosevelt had sent agents to help organise uprisings against Germany in Bulgaria and Serbia. He also allowed British ships to repair in US ports. From here in his speech, Hitler talks about the direct lead-up to the war and how in his eyes, the provocations ramped up. I'll present them below without comment, but remember to let me know what you'd have done in Hitler's shoes down below. All these dates are in 1941. June 4th, American troops arrive in Greenland to build airfields. June 9th, a US warship acting on direct orders from Roosevelt attacked a German submarine near Greenland with depth charges. June 14th, German assets in the US were frozen. June 17th, Roosevelt closed the German consulates in the US and expelled the diplomats. July 6th and July 7th, American armed forces occupied Iceland, which was in an area where German military operations were underway. 
According to Hitler, Roosevelt hoped this move would push him into war and stop the German submarine program. Around the same time, Roosevelt promised military aid to the Soviet Union in massive quantities. Hitler wouldn't have known the exact amount at the time, but it's clear he understated it. The sheer size of the military support to the Soviet Union would be revealed later. I'd recommend Stalin's War by Sean McMeekin for anyone interested. Back to events. July 10th. The Navy Secretary announced that the US Navy was under orders to fire on all Axis warships, essentially an unofficial declaration of war from the American side. September 4th. A US destroyer worked with British aeroplanes against German submarines in the Atlantic. September the 11th. Roosevelt confirmed publicly he had given the order to fire against all Axis ships. September 29th. US patrols attacked a German submarine near Greenland with depth charges again. October 17th. US destroyer operating as an escort for the British yet again attacked a German submarine with depth charges. November 6th. A German ship was seized, taken to an American port, and the crew imprisoned. December 4th. The Chicago Tribune newspaper publishes Roosevelt's plan to attack and have troops in Europe by 1943 at the latest. The US government did not even try to deny these accusations. Hitler then moved on to his personal thoughts about the situation. He thought Roosevelt had been acting against Japan in the Pacific in the exact same way that he had been acting against the Germans in the Atlantic. He wasn't surprised at all when Japan attacked Pearl Harbor and felt it was thoroughly deserved. He said that all decent people in the world appreciated the attack. It was retaliation for the endless provocations. Hitler said, quote, Even if we were not allied with Japan, we would still realize that the Jews and their puppet, Franklin Roosevelt, intend to destroy one state after another. For our part, we will now do what this provocateur has been trying to achieve for years. And not just because we are allied with Japan, but rather because Germany and Italy, with their present leaderships, have the insight and the strength to realize that in this historic period, the existence and non-existence of nations is being determined, perhaps for all time. Rather than incite war, these gentlemen who live in the most socially backward countries should have concerned themselves with their own unemployed people. They have enough misery and poverty in their own countries to keep themselves busy with ensuring a just distribution of food there. Hitler then announced he had returned the American diplomats their passports and the crowd went wild with applause, so he couldn't even finish what he was saying. Eventually, he went on and said, Roosevelt's policy has been aimed at denying Germany, Italy and Japan the vital means to their existence. The USA has opposed every effort to create a new and better world referring to Roosevelt's attempts to sabotage peace in the lead up to war. Hitler then said, Since the war began, Roosevelt has steadily committed more and more serious crimes against international law, such as attacks against ships and property of Germans and Italians, and even arbitrary arrests. He talked of how lately the acts were so hostile that the US was just attacking Italian and German ships at will, and that American officials were publicly boasting about sinking German submarines in this manner. Meanwhile, the Germans had strict orders not to attack the US ships in an effort to not widen the war. To conclude, he spoke about how he had so far refused to respond to such provocations, but now with his nominal ally, Japan, at war with the United States, he finally felt obliged to join the struggle. He read out the newly signed pact between the three main tripartite pact signees, Italy, Japan, and himself, stating that they will fight the war with the USA and the UK to the end with no separate pieces. The crowd then goes wild again, and Hitler closes off his speech. This is more of an open-ended question for the comments than a conclusion, but quite clearly, war with the USA was inevitable, and Roosevelt was fixed on slowly moving public opinion over to wanting to fight, and now Pearl Harbor had given him that. Roosevelt would have kept pushing Germany more and more until eventually war would have broken out. In my personal opinion though, with the precarious position Germany was in at the time in Russia, it may have been best to stall for time. Yes, war was inevitable, but that also wasn't a good time to be diverting resources away from Russia to where the Americans would obviously be coming. North Africa, where Italy, Germany's unreliable ally was. Hitler is obviously a lot smarter than I am, but I think there is a case to be made where he could stall for time and try to make progress against the Soviets first. But what do I know? To say he was justified in declaring war would be an understatement. It was as if the US was at war with him with the unrestricted naval attacks anyway, so who can really blame him? It wasn't quite the random act to join the war with Japan, like everyone says, after all.